So you say you were sent to Ethiopia now. Tell me about the trip to Ethiopia and how that led to you becoming a nurse. Oh, so, oh, you're ready for that one now. <laughs> All right. Yes. So anyway, that was 1984. And my daughter, that same one who just turned um, 40, 40 mm -hmm. she was like about two months old. So it was a happy and a sad. Yeah. Because you reach number eight and you feel like you don't spend enough time. You know, but anyway, while I was here in Ethiopia... So you mean you had to leave her to go? Leave her to go, yeah. Okay. And um, before it was Devon and I, Natalie first, and I who went together. And we took a, a lot of suitcases because we had brethren and sisters sending so many different things for everyone. We even have, I remember, Booth even sent some medical stuff, PDR books and, you know, physicians' best reference for the hospitals. This is where now, for in Shashamani, in, 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 in Ethiopia. In Ethiopia, okay. you're going, yeah, you're going, you know, you go to the hospital and you, uh, you know, mm -hmm. introduce yourself and you hand them the gifts and stuff like that. But one thing I noticed too, I remember sitting there and I remember them using one needle for like three, four children. When you say one needle, you mean you know, they were getting oh, injections? Oh, and they're using the, the same, same needle, needle on yeah, different children. children. Wow. And that seemed kind of Jesus, especially given the times. You're talking about 1984, mm -hmm. you know? And um, there was also a sister living on Shashimani who had given birth. She had a baby who was not doing well. He was ill. I don't ask for her name because it will be embarrassing. But she was having a difficult time. So in the morning when I get up, I usually go over to her. It was, it was nice, mm. you know? Anyway, it was nice. So anyway, when I came back after while, he didn't make it. So, so they were asked to do this. Mm. It was embarrassing. And um, I decided, you know what? What I want to do. Um, 1984. Yeah, I want to be a nurse. And I was able to find find a school to go to. In New yeah, York. In New York. You have to take a test. Okay. You have to go to a class. So it's kind of, yeah. And I went seven days a week, every in the evening. Okay. And that was, yeah, you start out as an LPN. And you do that for 10 months. And then they said, they called me in the office and they said, oh, you did so well. We're willing to give you a scholarship. But the scholarship don't mean a free ride. The scholarship mean I'm able to go immediately into RN school without getting experience. Mm -hmm. First. First. Mm -hmm. That was a scholarship. And you did that? I did that because the lady said to me, you should take it. You don't want to change bedpans all your life. <laughs> make sense and don't make sense, but it made sense. So that's what I did. I went to Iron School. So you're a trained registered nurse. I'm a registered nurse. Yes. So Long story. Okay. Short, yes. Okay. Yes, a registered nurse. Yes. And you worked in that field in New York after that too. Worked in that field in New York after that. Yeah, work at Rikers Island. Worked, uh, you say Rikers Island, the prison? Yeah, the jail, yeah. The, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, oh, that yeah. that sounds like an experience. That yeah, sounds like that a whole story you could tell about that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What that was that like, in brief? In brief, you get to find out that there are not just the world you live in on the outside, but there is a world with its communities, its rules, its members. Mm -hmm right there on the inside on the inside behind the bars behind the bars yeah and you learn a lot you, you really do it, it's a humbling experience and i remember one time um al sharton was demonstrating mm. they were doing a demonstrating um over the bridge because you know to go to rikers yeah, you have to cross the bridge, over the bridge. Mm -hmm. so they were doing a demonstration so we were not all 
allowed to leave. But some of us was allowed to leave. You mean as workers now you're talking? As workers because I'm a nurse. Yeah. So we can't all leave because you work for Montefiore, they have the contract. Mm -hmm. And it's still your post. So we, so I stayed. I stayed. I'm the RN and I stayed. You know, the registered nurse I'm working maybe with an LPA and also they should go. It's your responsibility to stay. So I stayed stay three days. And you and the prisoners were okay, the prisoners? Oh, yes. The thing with, with that, I will always say, the guards more have a fear. Not you. The prisoners take care of the civilians. Okay. They will take care of, of, of the clinic and the civilians, because it's in their best interest, too. Yeah. That's where they have their safety. And on many occasions, too, because I started out, my first post was with the adolescents, and sometimes you have to defend them when they come in, mm -hmm. because the way the system was, mm -hmm. it wasn't nice, you know? Especially knowing it's adolescents. Okay. Meaning we're talking about 14, 15, 16 mm -hmm. year old. Teenagers. Uh, yes, you know what I mean? And that kind of housing, you have all different housing, but anyway, yes. Yeah. Did you have any opportunity to work professionally with um, the, the first Rastafari dreadlock doctor, the, um, Dr. Pee Wee, Carl Pee Wee Fraser? You know, that's a good question and I never thought of it because I would have answered no to that question. But I can answer yes to that question. You know why? Because when I assisted with the thing, you know, mm -hmm. as I was saying, while he was in Virginia. Doc was there also. Well, on, well explain that now. You, you, you were sent to Virginia to help look after um, the, the, his, his, his Majesty. He was the emperor in exile, I think, at the time now. As for Wasson, who no, was living in Virginia, Virginia, in the USA. I wasn't sent. Okay. I wasn't sent because he sent me. I wasn't sent. I was um, asked because Peter Simeon, who was somehow, I don't, that would have to be his story aligned with the family, mm -hmm. but Seifu, who was in charge of the family's um, business, business and finances. Business and, mm -hmm. and all, you know, their safety, and, you know, mm -hmm. their business, their affairs. Mm -hmm. Let's okay. put it that put way. It that way yeah. Yes. You know, I guess it came down the pipe where it would be nice if they could have someone to assist. Okay. His, His Majesty had someone to assist, but sometimes, you know, we need more. Yeah. You, you understand? We, it, and we this are is like early here. 90s somewhere there now. This no. may be about 90. This may mm -hmm. be about 90. And he and was in ill like health. I know, I know, Seifu had come to the HQ, but he didn't get to, and I think he spoke to Larry, but that didn't happen. It's not that he was in ill health, because we're not going to talk about his medical it's situation. Medical situation is not my, yeah, but it doesn't matter. You are at a certain age, and you still need assistance mm -hmm. with certain things. We all do. Okay, and, and you helped, I mean, and you helped to provide that. Oh yes, yes. I mean, when when you get asked if you could do, mm -hmm. it's like a dream come true. Okay. Who don't want to serve the king? Mm. Don't we talk about that? Mm. That you would be a footstool. Mm. Hey? <laughs> Who don't want to serve the king? You know what I mean? So yeah. So you. you you do what you do, whether you have to go from New York to Virginia, back and forth, back and forth. You're serving the king. And you say Pee Wee, Dr. Pee -wee Fraser was now, was there, there at that time, time too? Yeah, not, not uh, like when I'm there, I'm there for the whole week mm -hmm. on a daily basis. That mm -hmm. don't mean Doc is there, but Doc knows Came Doc through. is there. Doc is, Doc is there because he's the medical. Doctor is a physician, a true physician. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And he's always there. 
where there is for me, for you. <laughs> Somehow he finds, and he was there, you know, and over, you know, look on certain things, and yeah. You would call him a road, but he was also a member of the 12 tribes he of Israel. Also a member of the 12 so, would you call him like a medical role model for yourself in any way, or were you inspired by the work you saw him doing? Um, I saw, I don't know, inspired because I'm a nurse, he's a doctor. Mm -hmm. And so as a nurse, you work with doctors, but you see the difference that, oh, this is a doctor, this is a physician. So you, when you, with others, you realize they don't know what the heck they're doing. Oh, that's what you're saying. Yeah, okay. they don't know this profession because I know what a physician truly is. So, so, so like, 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 like give us an example of like what, what would you see why you would make a statement like that? Because that was, if someone said any little thing, that is there. And you have the right medicine for it. Whether you need words of comfort, physical care, a healing hand, he was just there. And you, were, you feel trusted in his care. And his care was successful. I remember one time, and even a simple thing like this. My husband had this rash on his hand. And they are all the way in um, Pompano, Doc. And this is very long time. I'm just showing you the mm. nature of the person. He don't know. I'm not body special. And we went to other doctors. Mm -hmm. So I called him, the dreadlock doctor. <laughs> he was, and me, no thank you, you come and check him out. And did what he had to do, and that was the end of that. Everything is like working a miracle. I remember when I was sick in New York, when at the time some people thought I was dying, I don't know, I don't know the rumors, you know, people had to gossip on rumor, but anyway, I like holistic medicine. I, when I, doctor at the time, was in Jamaica and I asked him who would he recommend and he recommended someone. And when I met the person, <laughs> it was a holistic doctor in New York. He said he went to Jamaica after hearing about this dreadlock doctor on the radio and kind of trained with him and learned certain things. From PV. From PV. Dr. Fraser. Fraser. And the way he treated me with success, I can see he did learn from that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that's all that is. That's a, that's a good story. <laughs>